Hello from New Zealand. We, uh, this is Maniacal Cackle here doing the third uh, week of the October Vessel series, uh, doing my pool analysis for Resurrectionists. Uh, so up this week we've got uh, wedge ley lines uh, with this board over here. Uh, the scheme pool is research mission, let them bleed, assassinate, breakthrough, and outflank. I am going to be up against Bayou, and I'll be the attacker, so I'll be referencing the, as Thought says, doing his attacker and um, up against Bayou at times. Um, so first, let's cover Wedged Lines. So we've again got some really good Super Friends All-Stars uh, and Resers for tackling this. We've got the Dead Rider and Student of Vistra are just amazing at carrying the Lodestone. They can move between distant Lodestones. Um, all by themselves, they're pretty tanky, they can escape from uh, problems because Rider can ride with me out of engagement, Student of Vistra has Constriction which allows him to give the opponent a minus on uh, disengaging. Um, Yin deserves a special ma mention that I've marked as yellow because she can knock people off of ley lines so it's a constant threat. Uh, in my experience that's not quite a big enough threat to like really swing a game and so like that's not quite worth building around even though I have tried it over and over again. Um, but Dead Rider and Yin makes a good combo and Dead Rider himself can also knock people off ley lines. So that's a fair bit of pressure for knocking people off ley lines. Um, in terms of wedge ley lines, uh, Reva's fantastic. She can get right up in there and the cr enemy crew. I personally like to take Grave Golem with her. Um, shove Grave Golem up in their face, he throws some corpse candles and she can attack from the get-go. She's she's a good brawler, I think. Uh, Albish von Stuck, I've mentioned before, he's great at brawling. Uh, Jackdaw, I Wedge, uh, is pretty much ideal for him. Uh, then on Leyline specifically, he can stagger the Lodestone Carrier, which is really, really good. Um, because if their Lodestone Carrier is permanently staggered, that can just really, uh, ruin their day. So he's... I found him to be really awesome on ley lines. Downside for Jack Dawes, he does need to hire someone to carry the lodestone because he's not that good at it. And then if that model dies, that puts a lot of pressure on your crew, but that's all right because I think his crew's pretty good at killing whatever's in its path, so it, it, it works out. Uh, Kirai, uh, summoners in general are really good on uh, ley lines because the summons can still do the strategy. Uh, she can do a lot for it. Uh, Kirai's title is worth a special mention here because it is possibly an S tier crew. It's very, very strong. And on wedge ley lines, it just gets to uh, do everything it wants to do. The summons can help with the strategy. The wedge deployment means that you can get up and start murder ghosting the opponent really easily. They can't really avoid you on this setup. Uh, so, um, Long story short, I think if you're playing to win and you have access to titles, Kirai 2 is the way to go for this one. Uh, but I'm going to ignore that because uh, I don't really want to play someone who has to man micromanage like 15 models a turn. Just sounds nuts. It's not my play style. Uh, for our yellow tier, uh, McMorning, he's pretty good at ley lines. His models can run across the ley lines, but um, they can be a little bit squishy and that can be a little bit punishing. So. Uh, marked him yellow there. McMorning uh, 2, his title, phenomenal on ley lines, uh, because it, again it can summon 10 stones of models per turn trivially and they can help with the ley lines, and then he himself's a really good brawler, uh, there's just, and his crew's a lot tougher because of those upgrades. So McMorning 2, amazing. Uh, Molly and Yan Lo, they are perfectly capable of doing ley lines, they're great, however the wedge deployment does kind of put them a little bit closer to the enemy that they'd like to be, so I've, I've marked them down yellow there. Seamus, I think he's fantastic for ley lines, um, the fact that he can terrorize enemy models off the ley line and he can teleport between the ley lines with the secret passage, it's just like a serious, serious threat your opponent has to play around. Um, and for instance, if I was against guilds, like, uh, because they'd have Pale Rider and Lone Marshal, I would be strongly considering Seamus is, is very, very strong there. Um, but, again, on Wedge, and with this particular map, I'm not I'm not sure. Uh, Seamus gets higher than a yellow here compared to some of those other options. So let's talk about that board. Uh, this Railroad is not severe, just note that in this player pack it's been decided to be neutral, so uh, there's a couple of really noteworthy pieces. So we've got Terrain. There's enough blocking that Seamus can teleport around if he needs to. Um, the deployment zones, this one down here is really messed up by that forest. That just 
completely wrecks the unpack for some crews, um, and for crews that, for instance, uh, care about concealing, uh, that potentially mucks them up, although also equally shooting into that crew, uh, that uh, area can be a little bit rough as well. Um, another one thing to consider is you may end up with this building in your way uh, to block all your line of sight and everything, so then that can again make your on-pack awkward and you gotta go around and then there's this forest to contend with. Um, but I don't think it's that impactful compared to some of the boards we've seen. Vassal does tend to have some really big forests, which is something you always gotta work around, but I don't think it's too bad. So I think Von Stuck, Seamus, Jan Lo, Kirai, Molly, and Riva can all deal with this board just fine. That's they can they can work around uh, pretty much all of that terrain. Jackdaw I've marked as yellow because this building uh, is just big enough that your hanged can't walk through it, which is really annoying. Uh, and it, as I've mentioned in my previous videos, I don't think severe terrain, especially forest with that concealing trait, is something Jackdaw wants to see. So uh, that's just a bit a bit awkward for him, but it's it's not that bad. But it's it's. Uh, uh, something to be aware of. Dr. McMorning, again, he doesn't deal well with severe terrain, so if your defender is Dr. McMorning on this map, you got to be aware that you're going to end up in this severe patch and it's going to be horrible. But his crew is maneuverable enough that you just deploy off here and it's fine. You just run out and it would be perfectly fine. So really, I'd say almost everyone is almost green here. We have so many tools and resources to deal with this map. So, And as attacker, like I feel comfortable playing any of them faction matchup. It'll be interesting to see if I gave the same faction matchup last time, but uh, because I am once again against Bayou, like I was against last week. Uh, Riva, mark of removal, why play against it? Especially on ley lines, they are probably wanting to bring Lucky Emissary anyway to carry the Lodestone, so Riva just seems like, nah, you're, you're not doing yourself any favors. Uh, Kirai 1, again, uh, they have a lot of plank damage in Bayou, which it, when it comes from tacticals is ignoring your incorporeal, which is a pain. Um, and uh, one thing to note is I was pretty 90% certain I was going to face Ophelia on this pool. Ophelia absolutely smashes Jackdaw 1 because of his uh, uh, titles. Uh, well, not his titles, because he only has 6 health, and when you're taking a billion plank damage, it gets really inefficient starting through all that. So uh, Jackdaw is going to be struggling a bit there as well, I think. Um, Molly, Jan Lo, Seamus McCorning, Elvis Von Shook, I, I don't think I've ever had any problems with them in Bayou, although I don't have that much Bayou experience. I think they're all fun. Fine. One thing worth mentioning about Jack Daw is he doesn't like factions with lots of Ruthless, and Bayou doesn't have that much Ruthless except on their upgrades, and if they're taking upgrades, that's free card draw, that's free damage, that's just like giving you a lot of the tools you want for Jack Daw. So there is that I actually rate him much higher than I did last week. I'd now put him in a, a mid-yellow, oh, sorry, a high yellow probably, because he gets all that free card draw. Okay, on to the scheme pools. So again, we have research mission, uh, let them bleed, assassinate, breakthrough, and outflank. Um, it's a very, very kill-oriented uh, scheme pool. Oh, this scheme pool is very good at rewarding killing, so uh, overall just be keeping that in mind as we go through that the overall package you're probably going to be putting together on wedge ley lines with this scheme pool is just extremely kill oriented, extremely brawl oriented. Um, so research mission, special mention to the carry on emissary because it can do uh, a corpse marker with a zombie, it can do a coffin marker, and it can do a scheme marker. So it by itself can actually do the uh, entire scheme. Uh, but it is 10 stones, it's not that efficient, um, so I've marked it yellow. You can also be using the strategy markers, that makes things a little bit easier. Um, and you can use the carry-on emissary, for example, to use coffins to box people in on strategy markers. So there's some play there, it's, it's worth considering. Um, Riva, the queen of research mission, she is good on it on every form of deployment, or uh, every every map, any any, any pool, Riva's going to be happy to see research mission. She's our best uh, master at it. Von Stuck, he's got a lot of marker play. He can do some uh, good stuff with uh, denying it with uh, removing corpses. He can make extra scheme markers. Uh, he's really good at just walking up and claiming the center, and c crews that can claim the center are pretty good at uh, scheme marker stuff. Uh, Molly... 1 and Yon Lo 2 can uh, remove markers, but they're not that great at scoring it. Uh, Seamus and McMorning, they're all fine at scoring it, uh, so I've marked them all as yellow. Um, 
Kirai one uh, is quite bad at it. I'd probably mark her as red because uh, all her models don't leave corpses when they die. But Kirai two, their models can leave ski markers when they die. They can leave corpse markers when they die. So I'd probably put Kirai two up at a green. Uh, Kirai uh, one down at uh, probably a red. Um, and Jackdaw, like, uh, he doesn't drop any markers, he doesn't want to be spending turns interacting to drop schemes, I've just marked him red, I don't think. Research mission in this particular setup, unless your opponent's providing the markers, doesn't feel very good. Uh, let them bleed. Uh, McMorning, I have marked twice there, because I think he's S-tier at let them bleed, because his entire crew can heal for potentially 5-6 damage at the end of every turn. So trying to score let them bleed against Dr. McMorning is an absolute nightmare. And since he tends to be throwing out a lot of poison, uh, he's quite good at securing the points for it. So he's just really phenomenal for let them bleed. That's definitely something that's always going to make you lean a little bit towards McMorning. Uh, and same goes for his title. Both of them are just just fantastic for that. Reva with her burning, a uh, similar principle, but doesn't have the same heal up as McMorning, so um, she's pretty good at it. She's pretty, very killy. Um, Von Stuck, very killy. He can handle it. Seamus, uh, great at handling it, although he does have a tendency to one-shot things, so maybe maybe I should put him down at yellow. Seamus is tidal. Seamus 2 does a lot of pink damage and is probably really, really good at accomplishing Let the Bleed. Um, Jackdaw killing is what he does. He's fantastic for Let the Bleed, I think. Um, Molly is very, very good at building elite crews, very good at scoring Let Them Bleed while keeping her elite models safe, so I think she's uh, good at both scoring and denying, but not not quite on the levels of those others. Um, Kirai and Yan Lo, um, I think they probably can do it, but like it's a bit awkward because Kirai's summons don't count for it, and Yan Lo, you kind of want to be killing his elite models anyway, and he doesn't have that activation control to protect them, nor the card draw. Um, so there, there's going to be a liability to not be quite as good at it. Um, assassinate, uh, you're really looking at models that can contribute to the game while staying safe, and Albus, uh, Riva, Seamus, and Molly all are really good at staying safe. They can uh, contribute hugely to the game without really risking death that much. Uh, so I think they're, they're really, really good here. Um, and they're, of course, good at scoring it against most crews. Uh, Yan Lo and Kirai, uh, they have to be a little bit more in the action to be uh, contributing. Kirai does have protected, but that's a resource drain if you're having to discard like three cards a turn uh, to protect it, so I've marked them yellow. Uh, Dr. McMorning and Jackdaw I've marked as red for assassinate, because while they're very good at scoring it, they tend to give away two points because they want to be all up in the opponent's business. Uh, they want to be in, uh, forcing the opponent to work around them uh, because they, you don't get points by killing them normally, but if you can get two points by killing them, suddenly the opponent can be very efficient by killing them and removing this massive threat in their face. So, marking them as red tier. <coughs> that said, McMorning 2 and Jackdaw 2 both have really good options uh, into uh, Assassinate. I think they can contribute a lot to the game without going into the danger, so I wouldn't let uh, Assassinate being in the pool put you off picking these uh, masters, because they, they are... Um, I think they can handle it. And again, their crews are very killy and very, very good at scoring it. So I think that's right. Uh, breakthrough. Uh, Kirai, Von Stuck. Uh, so Kirai, enormous amount of AP. She can score it. Yanlo, he's got so many models that can score it and um, has quite a bit going on. And like his summon Gokudo are just so good at scoring breakthrough. Seamus can teleport around, he can do one or two markers, and then Bet Noir can do the others. Uh, Von Stuck, you've got your Necropunks, uh, just, and Students of Viscera, you've got so many options to just run over and score it. Molly, surprisingly, I mark as yellow, although I probably should mark her as green because she's so good at denying it, it's almost impossible to score two points of breakthrough against Molly unless you kill Molly herself. Um, but the scoring it, I always find a little bit awkward. I need to be spending the game doing other stuff. And I think that kind of reflects that Molly's just not that efficient a crew. She's just not quite the same s tier level this season as the other crews. So she, do she doesn't really have the spare capacity to run off and scheme when there's so much fighting this season. Um, Jackdaw doesn't really want to be running off into opponent's base and uh, scheming, but... 
he can get the one point easily, so I've, I've marked him yellow. Dr. McMorning, oh, maybe I should mark him green. He can spare a flesh construct. Uh, Kentori, etc. can probably go do it. And McMorning, too, extremely good at doing it because again, those flesh construct summons can just go pick him up, so he's fine. Uh, Reva's pretty okay at it, especially she can send a bone pile to the deployment zone, etc. But again, she probably has better stuff to do. So I think... I'm not. I'm, I'm really not sure about these rankings. I struggle with ranking breakthrough, but I think especially in this corrupted ley lines pool, I think those are the crews that could afford to do it, and these ones will struggle. Um, outflank. Okay, I admit it is a bit of a meme with me that I am way too harsh on outflank. But when you're talking about a corrupted ley lines wedge pool where you've just got e you're in each other's faces and the rest of the scheme pool is extremely killy, you cannot afford to send anyone off to the side to uh, score your uh, ley lines. Maybe, or sorry, to score your outflank. Maybe Kirai could do it, or McMorning too with his summons, like, but even then, it's taking so much away from the game when there's n nothing else relevant over there, and the rest of the game is occurring in this 18 by 18 uh, square formed by all the strategy markers, so uh, uh, if, if anybody scores outflank, uh, this uh, round, unless they have a very specialized crew, I'd be very surprised. Um, that said, uh, if you wanted to take two enslaved spirits whose job early game is to move a model up the board, and then mid game their job is to go score out flank, that seems perfectly reasonable to me. Uh, it's actually kind of costly for opponents to go uh, stop out flank, um, especially if you have. Uh, and wicked dolls are really, really good at it because they have stealth, so you actually have to send a model physically to go kill them. Uh, for Rezzers, uh, it can be a bit more difficult if your opponent has shooting and you throw an enslaved spirit. Although, ironically, they leave the ski marker when they die, you still need the mar 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 actual model to be over there. Um, so, uh, but if you do want to try out flank, uh, I think two enslaved spirits would be where I'd start, then with some backup models to go uh, score it if one or two of the enslaved spirits die. So that's it. That's It's a bit of a more straight pool or forward pool than last time. It's just very killy. Um, so if I was to recommend an S tier, like, definitely you should pick it. Uh, Kirai 2, I think, is just absolutely ridiculous at uh, this pool, although I haven't played her myself, but my impression I get. Uh, McMorning 2, very, very solid as well. Um, so he's he offers so many tools here. Um, I think uh, Von Stuck really, really good at this this ley lines pool. Um, so those are the first three masters that really spring to mind for me. Um, especially Von Stuck one is who I was thinking of. Though funnily enough, what I actually picked was Jack Daw because this pool seems pretty incredible for Jack Daw, and I'm really curious about the Jack Daw into Bayou matchup specifically. And it is against Ophelia, who um, it's been confirmed my opponent's playing Ophelia, and I wanted to see if Jack Daw can handle Ophelia because um, all that plank damage is just a tremendous threat and assassinates in the pool. So I have possibly gotten myself into just more trouble than I should have, but. Uh, you can follow uh, on the forums or the video that will be posted uh, later this week and find out if the uh, if it was a mistake to pick Jackdaw into Bayou on this pool. Uh, thanks, and as always, you can comment on the video or you can join us on the forums and uh, talk over it there. Thanks!